I'm ready now. And what about the loudspeakers? Is it okay? Is it too loud? Or is it okay? It's okay. Mm -hmm. The title of uh, tonight's lecture is Parenthood and Creativity. There are some people who are very fond of their family. The biggest joy is to live in a family. Their biggest joy and pleasure is to have their own children, to be together with the children and educate the children and uh, see the good results. Then there are other people. They are not so interested in children. They are not so interested in bringing up children. They are more interested in their job, in their interests. They want to be creative. And for that reason, Matthias has divided people into two groups. And it is the people who live in the joy and inspiration of the family, and the people who live in joy and inspiration through their creative activities. And uh, I guess that one of the biggest surprises in Matthias' cosmology is that a third sex is coming. Most people think there have always been men and women. There are men and women. And there will always be men and women. And then that is the big surprise in Matthias' cosmology. No, in the far future there will be no men and no women. But there will be a third sex. I mean, isn't that a surprise? That's really something and Martinus really stresses that most people, they are not aware of what is happening inside themselves. A big change is taking place. Their consciousness is being changed. And in order to explain that, Martinus speaks about two sexual poles. In his cosmology, he speaks about two sexual poles, and these two poles are in all living beings. But in some living beings, one of the poles are latent or dormant, so the other pole is totally dominating. And then Martinus speaks about a single pole living being. But in other living beings, both sexual poles, the male and the female pole, is developed to the same extent. They are in harmony, they see equilibrium between the two poles, and they are double poled beings. Evolution is something very central in Martinus' cosmology. In a way, it's a teaching about evolution. And Martinus says, that evolution doesn't take place by chance. There are certain rules, certain principles, or certain laws of nature behind the evolution. And when you know the laws of evolution, you can also predict the direction of the evolution. Often, people think that Martinus cosmology is fantasy, they want it proved experimentally or empirically. But I think when it's about evolution, you have a certain possibility to check Martino theories about evolution. And tonight I will speak about this part of the evolution that goes from single poledness to double poledness how the evolution takes place from a single pole living being to a double pole living being. And um, Martinus is talking very much about evolution, and here we have a, an evolutionary ladder. And this here, this area here, should symbolize the animal kingdom. And up here we have the real human kingdom. Real human kingdom. And here are some levels in the evolution 
for terrestrial man. That means these are the real animals, but terrestrial man is still a mammal because we copulate like the animals and we get milk from the mother like the animals. So we belong to the animal kingdom. And there are three zones in the last part of the animal kingdom. And Martinus talks about the zone of the happy marriages. And then we have the zone of the unhappy marriages. And then we have the zone of infertility. Sometimes Matthias asks, what shall save the world? Sometimes we are afraid that the planet Earth is destructed by atom bombs or something like that. What can save the world? And then he says, it's not the love in the marriage, the family love, that can save the world, because it cannot even save itself, it cannot even save the marriage. In a way, it could be a strange evolution, because we are coming from the zone of happy marriages, and then we are going into the unhappy marriages. Is that what is called evolution? It looks as if it goes back with the evolution. Here we have many divorces. But then Martinus also speaks about this zone of infertility. That means they get no children. But it is not a, a, an illness, it is not an anatomical defect. It's just the people there, they are not interested in having children. They don't want to have children. In all living beings, there are two poles. And, for example, in the male beings, there are a masculine pole. But then, there is an opposite pole, a feminine pole in all males. And it is developing to the same strength as the other pole. So, what takes place in the evolution from the animal kingdom to the real human kingdom is the evolution of an opposite pole. And I guess you could agree that this pole has the same size as this pole. Here there is an equilibrium, which means if that was the masculine pole and that is the feminine pole, here they have the same strength, that means this is a double pole being. For that say it could also be a female being. This is the feminine pole and this is the masculine pole. But you could also call it, this is the sexual pole. The sexual pole. And of course, the feminine pole is the, is the sexual pole in the female. And of course, the masculine pole is the sexual pole in the male. And the sexual pole is connected to the sexual organs. But the opposite pole is connected to the brain. If you ask people, what is the difference between animals and human beings? I guess most people would answer intelligence. Human beings are much more intelligent than animals. Isn't it so? So, it's a good sense to call this opposite pole, the second pole, for the intellectual pole. So we have a sexual pole and an intellectual pole. So, through our evolution from the animal kingdom to the real human kingdom, our intellectual pole is developing. And the title of the lecture was Parenthood and Creativity. And um, if we have human beings here, they are, maybe that's a primitive man of nature, they are totally single poles. Their biggest interest is the family. What are they living for? For the, the, um, they are making couples, the copulation, they are getting children, offspring, and they, are, they feed their offspring. And when that's uh, done, they can uh, relax and enjoy the sunshine, just like lions or tigers. So the two biggest interests for the animals, that, that is food 
and sexuality. And they are interested in their family life. But there are also, uh, I, should, I should say, these two, uh, these zones here, the zone of the happy marriages, doesn't really exist on planet Earth anymore. Maybe there is a few, few ones in the jungle, but this step in evolution. But most people today belong to this zone of unhappy marriages. And then we can see that the intellectual pole has already been developed to a certain extent. But some are still uh, living for the family, for the offspring. They are what Martinus would call very single pole. On a Saturday, I had a seminar or, or, or a course, and there was one woman who said, I was very happy today because um, my husband is on a business journey. So then I could come to this seminar. Otherwise, he doesn't allow me to go to, to such kind of uh, meetings. And I found that was quite interesting. So according to my analysis, the husband was very single bold because he was interested in the family. Everything that is within the four walls of the home, that belongs to the family. That is. Uh, the, the domain of the sexual pole. When you're very single pole, you have all your interest within the four walls of the home. But as soon as you start to get interests outside the walls of the home, maybe you get interested in Martinus cosmology or in the international language Esperanto, or maybe you're interested in art or science or different um, yeah, directions of, of art. Maybe you are interested in helping other people. Maybe you are working for a Red Cross or in some humanitarian uh, organization. And all interests outside the four walls of a home is an expression of the intellectual pole. And then you can feel a big joy helping other people. So um, there are some people, they are not interested in uh, creative acti activities. They are not interested in creativity. They are only interested in the family. They are the single pole ones. And then there are people that are almost double pole. They are not interested in family life. They are only interested in creativity. So, um, in a way, there are two types of human beings. And the first part, they are only interested. I think he called them reproductive beings. They're interested in family life, family life and getting children. And of course, if they have good children, they educate them, they can see the result of their work through the children. And they are so happy for their children. That is their biggest joy. That is reproductive beings. But then there are also some creative beings. They are not at all interested in having children. They are not interested in educating, but they are interested in what they can produce. And when they have made um, a piece of art, they can be very happy. And the biggest joy in life for them is the joy over the creativity. So you can have the biggest joy when you are single pole, the biggest joy is family life, and when you are Double pole, the biggest joy is the joy of creativity. But of course, we are, many of us, in, in the middle of this, um, of this uh, area. I know it's summer, but I would like to mention a few words about Martinus' little book uh, with the Danish name Jule van Gilles. Maybe it was Christmas gospel or something like that. And then Martinus uh, explains. Um, uh, the difference between the objects in a big warehouse and the objects in a museum. Because uh, there might be a warehouse where you can buy your presents and so on, and you can put ask, how have these products been produced? They have been produced because the producer wanted some profit. And maybe it has been produced 
by people who feel that they have been forced to work here in order to get money to pay their food and, and, and their rent. So it's uh, more um, or less uh, a product of, uh, of uh, the animal side or the, the negative side. But then he says, what about the products in the most beautiful museums? Maybe there have been painters that uh, have, have painted the most beautiful paintings. And then you could ask, why have they produced these paintings? Have they produced them in order to have a big profit? No. Most of the old painters, they lived very, very poor. They did it because they couldn't help doing it. They, 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 they were so interested and it gave them so much joy to create these uh, things. So, um, this is the evolution for us in the future. We will become more and more uh, creative. And um, we can have a certain activity in the ordinary pole, and we can have a certain activity in the, uh, in the opposite pole or the secondary pole. I guess there are many women who are relatively double poles. But maybe when they are young, they get pregnant and then get a child. And then, temporarily, they can get more single poles. Especially when a double pole woman is pregnant, all biological functions in this period makes her more single pole. And of course, when she gives milk to the babe and has to take care of the kid, temporarily, for biological reasons, she is more single pole. But you often see, maybe when a woman is 40 years old and uh, she has educated the children, she starts to paint or write a book. Or I have seen so many examples, at least in Danish television, that it shows that the women has become very creative. And that fills their life, and they are so happy being creative. So that is the highest joy a double pole living being can, can experience. That is to be creative. And you could also ask, why should I be, be creative? Well, I think I have three good reasons for being creative. And you could also, you yourself, want to be very creative. And you could say, I would like to be cre creative for my own joy, for my own pleasure. But I hope with my creative activity that it can be a joy and benefit and bliss for others. And from a cosmical point of view, the whole universe is a living being, and that is God. And this planet Earth is under creation. Martino says there are macrocosmic forces behind the evolution of this planet Earth. And this planet Earth is, by macrocosmical creative forces, transformed into a physical paradise where all human beings will live in health and joy and harmony and love with each other. So there is a big creator who is making a big creation on planet Earth. And that was third. If you want to help the big creator with this creation, you can have a lot of inspiration in your own creativity. I just repeat, if you want to be creative for your own joy and pleasure, if you want to help and uh, give light and uh, nice experiences to others with your creativity, and because you want to help the big creator, you will have a lot of inspiration, and you will have a lot of help, and I think you will become very happy in your creative activity. <coughs> I read a book by an American woman called Julia, Julia Cameron, Danish title was creativity. I guess the American title was the artist's way. And she had worked with artists who had become blocked. There were so many, they would like to be creative, but they didn't succeed. I know nowadays we have computers, but before there were authors, writers, who always were sitting with a blank piece of paper in the typewriter. 
and they couldn't get started. Or you know this with the painter, and there was just this white board, and he couldn't get started. There's so many stories or stereotypes about artists that cannot get started. And there can be many different reasons why they are not creating. And she has worked maybe 10 years with blocked uh, artists. And then she had found out a lot of good uh, piece of devices. And uh, this book, the book was sort of a, a workbook. You could work with yourself during 20 weeks. But to me, it was quite interesting to see what can block artists. From a cosmological point of view, it was quite interesting to see. And I would like to mention some examples. For example, um, if these artists are drinking a lot of alcohol, maybe they are smoking a lot, maybe they are taking some narcotics, it shows up that they are not so creative. And if it goes proceeds over a longer period, they cannot create anything at all. And of course, when you intoxicate your body, it doesn't work so well. And in a way, if you want to be creative, everything in your body and your consciousness should work optimally. It is also interesting, as Matthias explains, that in our brain, there are areas that are prepared for cosmic consciousness. They are sort of inactive, but they are prepared for cosmic consciousness. That's what I call intelligent design. <laughs> uh, these centers are not created because they are given advantage in the survival. But they are being designed in what Martinus called the kingdom of wisdom. And Martinus says when we try to understand his analysis, we are using these new centers in our brain. And once Martinus told himself that uh, in the beginning, when he explained the symbols to his first secretary and lecturer, Iaganalasan, Iaganalasan fall asleep, and Iaganalasan uh, excused a lot because he thought that was so embarrassing. Only sitting two people talking together, and then he fall, fell asleep. <laughs> but Martinus explained it from the fact that he had to use these new centers in the brain so, so much that it was a kind of overload. It, it was too hard work for him in the beginning, so he, he fell asleep. And I love this story very much, because sometimes people also fall asleep during my lectures. <laughs> and it's very bad if the lecturer himself starts to think, oh, it's so boring. Then you sort of come to a stop, you lose your inspiration. But then I think, oh, now their higher selves are working very hard. So my lecture must be very inspiring. And then um, I get some inspiration to continue, although they are falling asleep. But Martinez has explained that alcohol and nicotine and uh, drugs, they are very harmful for these centers. And these centers are prepared for cosmic consciousness, which means they are prepared for intuition. And of course, if you want to be creative, you have to work by intuition. It is the intuition that has given art all its big results. Often Martinus mentions three types. He mentions artists, scientists, and inventors. Sometimes, even in lectures, he names Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr by name. And he said, you can see, they are very humane people. They have come very far in their evolution, and they are very intuitive. And it is due to their intuition that they have given science so much. You could say that also about all great composers and painters and so on. All the big things that have been able to give to humanity, that is through their intuition. So it's very important to have intuition if you want to be creative. And then, of course, it's so destructive. 
to take these drugs. Because Matthias, he talked about it in the 60s and 70s, where there was a lot of hippies, and they were smoking a lot of grass and hash and taking LSD and a lot of other things. But Martinus warned against it and said that that was damaging these centers in the brain that were meant for the cosmic consciousness. Just by side, I would also like to say, Martinus say, says, you should not expect to get cosmic experiences. You should not expect to get cosmic glimpses when you are angry. <laughs> so in a period where you are very angry, you also block this, because then you are not at the same wavelength as God. So if you want intuition, you should be at the same wavelength, wavelength as God. And God represents love, an all-embracing love, an unconditional love. And the more that you are yourself on this wavelength, the more crazy you can, you can be. And um, she also found out that if you want to be creative, because you want to be famous, you want to make a big hit, you want to earn a lot of money, and you concentrate so much upon your success and how brilliant you will be, then you are not humble, then you are sort of proud and you are ambitious. In a way, you could want to be creative for egoistic reasons. And that's also interesting to see that then your creativity is blocked. Because if you are, have egoistic thoughts, if you are proud, I want success, I want people to love me because I'm so creative, I want people to cost me, to pay a lot of money to me, then you are not at the same wavelength as the spiritual world and then you will also lose your inspiration. There was also a lot about, uh, in this book, about people. You are surrounded by different people. And of course, some people are inspiring to you, and actually some people take your inspiration away. She just simply recommended not to see friends who took the inspiration away. She said you should only see the friends who give you inspiration, who think you are good, who you are doing uh, good things, and also you should be together with people who brings you pleasure and, and joy in, in life, because it shows up that you can only be creative if you are if you are happy, if you are satisfied. And there is also uh, a little area that I would like to touch. <coughs> that is that um, there are many examples in the history of big artists. They became sad and depressed. And they, they could not create anything. Then they needed a muse, such a female being, that could give them some inspiration. I think in the Greek mythology there are nine muses, one for each discipline of the different arts. But sometimes also this artist, he needed to fall in love. And for that reason, this person could feel a big joy of life because falling in love, that gives the, the highest pleasure in life. Martinus, some, in sixth volume, writes about the fact that if you have lived in a marriage or relationship many, many years, and if you are not in love with your partner any longer, then it is wandering in the desert. And he says that you, you are losing vitamins. So get, to fall in love is the same as getting spiritual vitamins. Falling in love is vitamins for the soul, which really makes you happy. And for that reason, some of these big artists could become creative because of the joy over this falling in love. But this falling in love business can also destroy the creativity in a certain way. Because Martinus talks about these two poles, 
and then you can be more active in one pole and less active in the other pole. And actually, within one lifetime, you can just be like a pendulum, go from one state to the other. <coughs> Once I had a friend in Jutland. He met the Martinus cosmology and became very, very interested. At the same time, he became married and got a child. And within the first year, he was able to read the seven volumes of Lee's book. But what do you think happened to his marriage? He was separated very quickly. And of course, that's not the purpose of the cosmology, <laughs> that you should not sort of take care of your duties. But to me, it was a very interesting and living example because then he became so active in the, in the intellectual poem. If you read all seven volumes in one year, you are very active in this pole, so the pendulum has gone to this pole. And then it's almost zero for the other pole. And that's pretty bad if you have just become married and you've got a child. On the other hand, sometimes I notice here in Clint that some single people are coming and they are looking a little bit around for other single. And sometimes they fall in love. And then they start to go hand in hand along the seashore. And then they don't show up in the lecture hall. They don't show up in the study groups. What has happened? They have been activated in their ordinary poem, in the sexual poem. And then you're not so active in, the, in this intellectual poem. And just a third example, some uh, 20 years ago, uh, I had seven, eight friends, male friends, they were all group leaders and uh, lecturers in the Martins cosmology, we were younger, and none were married, no lived in a, in a relationship, they were all free, and we were only talking about sex uh, and about <laughs> Martins cosmology. <laughs> and we were talking about Martins cosmology all the time, and then some of them stopped, the activity with the cosmology, or they fell in love and got children, and then they stopped to give lectures. But uh, my, the moral is, I think, that if you give lectures, it's dangerous to stop, because as soon as you stop, you will get children. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's uh, the best remedy of uh, protection, uh, using the Odyssey pole. I even I think that's uh, also the fact in Africa. Uh, there are uh, an overpopulation, and then you try to limit it, and then you can come with birth control pills and condoms and PSRs and so on, but they say the best remedy is education. That is, also if you are a refugee, you are living in some camp, what shall you do? There's nothing to do without sex, but if you get some education, you could start and study and be interested. And there were other interesting things to do. So it's quite interesting that you can go from one pole to the other pole. So in a way, it's a little paradox that the very big artists, they should fall a little bit in love to become creative. That means they did not become, they did not fall in love because they wanted a family and children. But they fell a little bit in love to feel this joy of life and when you feel life is wonderful, life is fantastic, I'm happy, then in a way you are at the same wavelength as God. And then you will have this inspiration. Normally, in lectures yet again, we talk about when you have developed your feelings, when you have developed your intelligence to a high degree, and they are in balance. This opens for intuition. And if you practice neighborly love to human beings, to animals, to microcosmos, then you will get in inspiration, uh, intuition, cosmic glimpses, and so on. But in one article, Martinus does not stress that we love and moral, but he stresses this joy for life further on in the evolution. Then, of course, you will get a 
better fate than you have now. And I think it's an interesting experiment of thought. Once in the future, your fate is so good that you just simply feel happy for your good fate and you feel, I would like to say thank you for my good fate. And you feel a gratitude towards life. And then what seems this article says, this is the beginning of the cosmic consciousness. That's also interesting. So this of having intuition of being inspired is connected to this feeling of joy for life. In this memory book of Martinus, once Martinus says, I love God so innerly. I love God so much. And I can understand that he says so. But if you replace God with life, I'm sure he could say the same. I love life so innerly. I, I love life so highly. I love life so dearly. That would also be nice if we could say the same thing. I love life so innerly. I love life so much. The Martinus analysis can help us in this direction, feeling this joy for life which opens for the intuition. Um, of course, there were, were a lot of uh, other examples in this book, and I don't remember all of them, but I would also like to mention the nature. Many artists who are blocked could be helped through nature. Just if you go out and see a flower and think, what a beautiful flower. And if you see what a beautiful tree, if you really can feel joy for the nature, that also helps you to become more creative. And naturally, because the nature is also the work of God, there is an intelligent design by the whole nature. And uh, you can come closer to God in different ways. As I said, if you can feel unconditional love for other living beings, you are closer to God. If you can feel joy for life, you are happy for life, you are also closer to God. But also, if you can walk in nature and see God's design in nature, you can feel how fantastic nature is, and you, then you also can feel the closeness of, of, of God. So that is also um, a question of talent. You can get more and more acquainted to, to experiencing nature and uh, experience that you are closer to God through this um, activity. But you can uh, also help mankind through inventions and also through the physics. All these beautiful technical things we have nowadays with internet and mobile phones and satellite communication, that's also a big benefit, a big bliss uh, for human beings. So that's also good. But it could also be people who are working for better social conditions, they are working for Red Cross, they are working for the Martinus cosmology, they are working for, for the international language Esperanto, they are trying to improve social conditions in your own country, they are working for internationalism, they are working for understanding between people and, and so on. That is also a, a creative uh, activity. And Martinus uh, mentions here that in this soul of infertility, you can still want to have a partner. So there are a kind of marriages here. That means man and wife are living together. They have an intimate sexual life, but they don't want to have children. They're not interested in family life. They're not interested in bringing up children. But they want this sexuality and this friendship. But then they have a lot of interest outside the marriage. And then they don't have to be creative in the same area. Best is if they only have the same amount of interest outside the marriage. Um, if, for example, the wife is more double pulled than the husband, it could be so that the husband had 80% of 
and hid the interests within the four walls of the home. And she only had 50% of her interests within the home. Then there's a lot of time where she wants to spend her time outside the marriage, doing creative things or uh, good things for humanity outside. And then the husband becomes jealous, not on another lover, but on her interests. So that can also be somewhat unhappy, an unhappy situation, that you are not married to a person at the same level in the uh, evolution. I guess the loudspeakers is a little bit too loud. There's some kind of echo. Yeah, that's good to talk about such things then. Uh, but uh, it's about this evolution towards double boldness. And here, at the end, in a way, you only have one interest. And that is, how can I serve other people? And I think that's the top of creativity. Martinus um, uh, ha had a help by Lars Nibelmann. Before Martinus got his cosmic consciousness, he borrowed a book from Lars Nibelmann. And it was something about how you could meditate, and then Martinus sat down in his armchair, concentrated on God, and then he got his cosmic consciousness. And he told Lars Nibelmann about it. And then Lars Nibelmann understood that Martinus had strong psychic powers. And then he said to Martinus, Oh, Martinus, you can earn a lot of money by your psychic powers. And then Martinus uh, looked at her, uh, on, upon him, and then Martinus said, I'm only thinking about how I can serve my fellow beings. And I think that's so inspiring. He said, I never let my consciousness deviate from the best way to serve my fellow beings. But that also um, is two of the uh, main contrasts if you are one pole and if you are two poles, the biggest interest for one pole beings is actually to have power, that is to take from others, that is to monopolize others. But for double pole beings, the highest is to give them. And if you are talking about the love capacity, how big is the love capacity of a single pole being. That is, such a person is only able to love one person. person. That was not much. But now we are here in the zone of the unhappy marriages. Sometimes a man can also love the wife of the neighbor, and uh, love, love, love the wife of the job. And of course I'm making a little joke about it, but actually, when the opposite pole is growing, your love capacity is also growing. So at the end, you should have a love capacity so you could love all living beings. And there is a big sexual transformation. And on these levels in the evolution, you are only conscious about the intellectual side of the pole evolution. But actually, there is also a sexual side behind the pole. There is a reason why Matthias calls it two sexual poles. So a long, long time, human beings, they are not aware about the opposite sexual nature. And that is the big surprise. In all women, a man is growing. There is a masculine nature that is growing in all women. But normally a woman feels herself as a woman. She is not day conscious in the man in herself. She is not brain conscious, conscious in her masculine pole. And in the same way, a woman is growing in all men, but they don't know it. You can only see that the intellectuality is growing. But at a certain time, the opposite pole has grown so much that you cannot help it then you are becoming brain conscious or day conscious in the sexual nature of the opposite pole. And it could be like that. Maybe two women are sitting in two chairs and then listening to a lecture, and then one woman has a sexual feeling 
for the for the other woman. Something tickles, and she, to her big surprise, she has a sexual feeling towards that woman, which is almost like the sexual feeling that she has to a man. And the most natural is that it comes from inside and a surprise. But this new poem can be opened in an unnatural way. It can be forced. For example, if grown-up homosexuals seduce small children of their own sex, the opposite pole of these children can be opened too early. Or I heard I read about young boys in Moscow. They prostituted themselves with homosexual men from the Western countries. They could get hundred dollars for one sexual act with a rich homosexual man from the West. And of course they would like to earn hundred dollars. Maybe it was a little bit strange. And if they go on and on in that way, the opposite pole is also opened in an unnatural way. It can also be in monasteries. Maybe there have been some nuns, and one nun could, maybe an older nun could seduce a younger nun because there were no men there. And also now we know in the Catholic Church, where the priests are not allowed to marry, there, there is also uh, priests who have seduced small boys in the choir, or they have monks have seduced each, each other. So it can also be open in an unnatural way. It can be by force, because of money, because you, you are uh, uh, drug addicted, or you are too much alcohol, there's many. But the best thing is that it comes spontaneously, without knowing it. It's the same with the cosmic glimpses. You shouldn't chase cosmic glimpses through meditation. Just wait until it comes totally, spontaneously. Maybe you are praying every evening to get a cosmic glimpse very soon, <laughs> but you should rather pray that you could wait as long as possible. <laughs> because a certain day you cannot wait any longer. Then it comes totally, spontaneously. And that's also the same with the opposite form. That's just like in springtime. You can see there are some flowers that are preparing, they, they are not opened yet. And every day, but someday, you cannot wait any longer. Then they, they, they open. At a certain day, they are mature for opening. And then it's so beautiful and it opens by a, a natural way. And many people think that it is strange that you should feel a sexual attraction to your own sex. But you should develop an unconditional love. Uh, you should become an all-loving being. You think it's natural that a young man is loving a young woman. But it's not, the meaning is not that a man shall love another man. The meaning is that there is a woman. There is a woman in the man. And that woman in the double pole man shall love a man. And that is just that is just as natural as a woman is loving a man. So it's, it's, not, it's not unnatural, not at all. And when a woman is loving another woman, it's not unnatural because the, the opposite pole in the woman, that's a man. And this man in the woman is loving another. He is loving another woman. And then you are becoming impartial and you can love all living beings. Uh, I don't think there are statistics, but uh, I, I think you very often notice that many of the big geniuses, they are homosexuals. They can love one another. But that is not, of course, some can have had, had the new poem open by force. But there is a relationship uh, between it, because the more double poems you are, the more ingenious you are. And the more double pole you are, the more neighborly love you, you, you have. And Martinus talks about different kinds of art. But the biggest kind of art, that is the art of life. So you will become a piece of art yourself. Just like people can enjoy some music, they can enjoy a painting, then uh, they will also be able to enjoy every person. And Martinus has drawn this symbol number 33 about the humane and animal thought climates. And there is one symbol called neighborly love. 
It begins. It begins here, and then it goes on, and you cannot see where it has a culmination, where, where it goes on. But the motive of the spiritual worlds, that is neighborly love. You, you should just entertain your fellow beings. And in the future, we will not have to work so much. We can train all possible kinds of talents. So we will become so ingenious in all different areas. So we can tell funny stories, we can play wonderful music, we can make paintings. And even in the spiritual world, you, you don't need a piano to play wonderful music. You can just think it. You don't have to color and paint. You can just imagine and you can see it in spiritual matter. But um, in the animal kingdom, you have the principle of self-preservation. It is an instinct to take care of yourself. But in the future, you will sort of get a new instinct. That is the instinct of neighborly love, the instinct of serving. You are only occupied by the thought, how can I be a joy and a pleasure for all my fellow beings? So in the future, you will become really creative in a very divine way because we will entertain one another in the spiritual world. And with these words, I will say thank you for the attention. Thank you for your interest.